Hi everyone and welcome to another painting video. In this video I show you the process of one of the studies I painted in the past few days. I am super proud of them because they are so cute. I like them a lot and if you like to adopt them they are available for a very affordable price in my online shop. I leave a link for you in the video description. I always wanted to do studies be it with watercolors or oils or acrylics but I never found a way to do them without spending hours and hours on painting them. I never had any good idea. But then I discovered that Jelena created beautiful little originals on paper with prints on it. And I loved this idea so much. I found it absolutely fantastic. The idea of painting on this printed paper is inspired by Jelena. Please check her out. She is an amazing artist. I will also leave a link to her Instagram account in the video description for you. So I wanted to do studies on printed paper myself because I really loved the idea. I didn't have to fill out the entire paper and I can use the print of the paper to incorporate into my study. So I headed over to the nearest shopping mall and bought everything I could find. I found a couple of beautiful papers with flowers and feathers and birds and I was so excited. This doesn't happen often because many of my paintings pretty much have a strict routine and I don't really do anything different most of the time. So <laughs> this can get quite boring sometimes so everything that is different from that routine is absolutely exciting for me. After I had bought those papers, I also wanted to incorporate stickers because I already made the experience that adding stickers to my work really gives it another layer. And I thought it also fits to this kind of process, like a mixture between oil painting and a collage. So I also bought stickers and yeah, I was so excited. So I picked a paper and then I looked through my inspirations of photos and portraits which portrait would fit to this kind of paper. As for my materials I paint with the Arteza acrylic paints. Many of you who know me know that I paint with them like for a couple of months already and <laughs> I know this looks like an absolute mess but this is the palette I'm painting with. <laughs> I know isn't that beautiful. Um, this is a Stay Wet palette. I know the name is amazing. <laughs> it is from Dela and Rowney. And um, normally <laughs> you have a clean sheet of paper and then you put the colors here on top. And then you can use, for example, a spray, like a water spray pump. And um, can spray it and everything stays wet. And it stays wet for a month or even longer so this is amazing and you can clean it I'm just very lazy and I didn't clean it and you can also change the paper and get a new one um, I usually just clean this part here and then continue painting with it and I totally managed to completely mess up the rest of the palette too so this is just me and this is how I work I do have order in my workspace as well so for example the rest of all the Arteza paints, for example, are here um, in this drawer, which is super. Um, so I, I have order, it's not, not everything looks like that. <laughs> I also use like white from Liquitex and black from Liquitex. A retarder from Golden to increase the working time of acrylics, it helps. And I recently switched out the pink, this is from Sinali, it's good. So this is the first part of the um, materials that I use. But before we continue, let me do a little bit of housekeeping first. For those of you who don't know yet, my painting videos on YouTube show you my painting process only in time lapse. If you want to learn my process with me explaining what I do in real time and step by step, support me on Patreon for a small amount per month. I have almost a hundred painting lessons and tutorials for you that work you through a complete painting from start to finish that are way longer than the ones you can find on my YouTube channel. You can download my reference photo, my sketch and the material list for many of my tutorials. If you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and 
real-time lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of unrated but even longer real-time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. And for the second part, which you will see later in the video, I use oils. It's like super time saving to do the first layer with acrylics and then add another layer with oils. This is my oil painting palette, which looks almost as messy as the acrylic painting palette. <laughs> this is a tear off palette, which I find super helpful because I just don't want to clean my palette that often. <laughs> I'm really lazy sometimes. And yeah, here is my paint medium, which is liquid original to increase the drying time and also to change the consistency of the paint. Here you can see the packaging it is a complete mess but it's kind of unavoidable due to how this bottle is made it's always a like a mess working with this and i'm using safflower oil i just refilled it in this little glass box here yeah i have it like in this thing this is also i know everything looks horrible here I don't know why, painting with oils and with acrylics, it will lead to a mess. These are my brushes. I do have a couple of Trekel brushes as well. I use them for larger paintings. For the smaller paintings, I used to have a small Trekel brush, which like a detail brush, but I don't know, it is ruined for some reason. I think I killed it. And yeah, here I'm just working with a couple of detail brushes. And these are my oil paints. So I'm working with Rembrandt, Norma, and I think like Sinelli, I also have a silver oil paint from Arteza. So it's a mix of everything. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, my workspace looks amazing. It is like a complete mess. For my studies, I used like a couple of toned and colorful paper and stickers, washi stickers, <laughs> pretty much everything that I could find. And I didn't buy anything of this online. I just went to the nearest shopping mall and <laughs> just hauled everything and bought everything that I could find. So I have no links for this paper. For all of you who are in Europe or Germany, this is from Action. Um, this is from a Japanese convention, Dokomi. So yeah, I know this is no no help. This is from Hobby Made. Maybe you have like crafting stores where you can find maybe similar stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, this was a little tour. I have all my materials listed down in the video description. So if you didn't catch all the materials, just have a look at that. After having found a portrait that I thought would match the paper and overall the atmosphere that I want to generate, I just started painting. And the great thing with acrylics is that you can pretty much paint on any surface without having to prime it or anything. So you can just paint away. And this is right up my alley. I really like that. And uh, there are different ways on how to freehand your underdrawing. Because when you start a portrait, it can be a little bit difficult. You start somewhere and then maybe the proportions are completely messed up. So in the past, I began painting my portraits with drawing all the features of the face first. But recently, I found a different technique that I like even more. So first, I draw out the dimensions of the face and the neck area and just place it here in this case between the flowers so that I can use and incorporate the motifs of the background. And first I just work on the shape of the face. And then instead of drawing the features with lines, I work with shapes instead. So I draw the shadows of the eye sockets and the shadows of the nose and the lips and generally all the other shadows <laughs> that I can find on the face. Here in this portrait, the right side of the face is slightly darker than the left side and there's shadow beneath her neck. So this is what I painted in the beginning so that I have a rough 
shape of my face. I just treat it like a three-dimensional object and I work on the rough shapes first. Maybe it is comparable with the way how you would maybe do a sculpture. You start with the rough shapes first and then you continue with the details. And because I painted with acrylics, even though the first layer wasn't opaque, I could just use my blow dryer and then I didn't have to wait long until the paint had dried and so I could just paint right away and added as much layers as needed to cover the colorful background of the paper. And then I continued this process where I only focused on the shapes. For example, the nose I treated like a triangular shape and I also simplified the shapes of the lips and I didn't pay a lot of attention to the details first. I also used a little flat brush because with this shape of the brush I could work the best in this way of simplifying the facial features. And then after I was happy with the proportions I switched the brush and worked with a pointed tip brush to draw in for example the eyelashes and the nostrils. Also I used reference photos that I just found on the internet but I didn't pay a lot of attention to the proportions. So I painted the expression of the faces. For example, I see something in the look of the model and then I paint that. I don't pay attention to the proportions in a way that I want to represent exactly my reference photo. Instead, I want to paint what I see in this portrait so they look quite different than the original photos, which I like, of course. I always want to express what I see in a photo and I want to convey a feeling rather than create a copy of a photo. After having switched my brush to the detail brush, I painted in the lashes, the irises, nostrils and so on. My experience with acrylics so far is that the consistency is a little bit gel-like and I haven't been able to make as fine lines and as precise brush strokes as I could do that with my oil paints. And this is the reason why I combined the two mediums in those studies or generally in my other paintings too. So I start everything necessary like the major and important color blocks with acrylics and then when I can't get finer and I can't make transitions between the colors or just add more more values and more skin tones with acrylics because it dries so fast or it isn't fine enough, I switch to oils. <laughs> and here, in this case, um, after having worked on the facial features, I continued with painting in the dark color of the hair around the figure and also figuring out which parts of the background I want to incorporate into this portrait and which I want to overpaint. Now, if I want to incorporate stickers into my work, I have to do that before I work with oils on my painting because you cannot stick a sticker on an oily background. This obviously wouldn't work because the sticker would just fall off immediately. And I also didn't want to wait until the oil dried because then the sticker would definitely stick better and there wouldn't be a problem, but I didn't want to wait. So I had to think where I can place the sticker before I add the oils. After having placed the sticker successfully, I switched to oils and now the the wonderful painting part began because now I can really add a lot of color values to the skin. I can make beautiful transitions between the various skin colors and I can work more on the depth of the portrait. Obviously because this is a small format the extent on how I can do that are limited. So I am not able to create such a detail or depth as I would be able to do it in a larger format. But still it was quite the difference to the acrylic painting process and I really enjoyed that. I basically just overpainted the complete portrait with a layer of oils and the advantage of starting with acrylics is that you don't have to prime your paper. So if you paint with acrylics you create a plastic base and on top of that plastic base you can then place your oil paints and there's like this protective layer between the paper and the oils. Otherwise the oils would sink into the paper, they would get very very Met. I really enjoyed how I could shape the proportions 
proportions of the face with just one or two brush strokes. With a larger face you obviously have to paint more to make an impact, but here just with this little detail brush I could make such a impression on the portrait. I also enjoyed working on the skin tones a lot because they are rather grayish and bluish and creating a couple of studies with different skin tones is really very satisfying because even though I always only paint female portraits never gets boring. This is always so exciting to paint those individual facial features and create an absolutely different expression with each portrait that I do. And having those different skin tones also add to the atmosphere. For example, this girl for me looks very mystical and dark, like she might be from a different era, maybe she lives in a castle. I don't know, she looks kind of mystical to me and there's a darkness in her look and she has this dreamy expression and I really really like that. And each face that I paint has its own fascination to me and I want to bring this special expression to paper and when I see either photos or also just people in real life, I see a special expression in their face and I always want to bring this expression to canvas or to paper. The fact that I can do this with a study that just take me maybe two hours or so, it's amazing. So I can get this feeling of excitement very quickly without having to work on a huge painting that takes me forever. It's really addictive. So <laughs> I hope I will be able to make more of these studies because they are so much fun. After having finished five studies, I encountered the problem that now I had to name them all. And I didn't want to give them just numbers because I, I don't know, this isn't right in my opinion. But I also didn't want to search the internet and put a lot of time into research. Those studies for me are something that are created in a short amount of time and there is something special in this shortness. Instead of researching like hours for names, I wanted to find a way to give them a name in an instant which also fits to the painting. So I went to the internet and searched for random girl name generators. And this is something that always fascinated me anyways because just the fact that you click on a button and then you get random names or names for characters or monsters or for worlds even, it just blows my mind. So <laughs> it's like it isn't that there is a name generated in a fraction of the second but there's also a whole person or a whole word generated in this fraction of a second because my mind immediately imagines something around that name for example how this person looks or what this world could be or what this character could be so this process just fascinated me and i thought this is just perfect for these studies they are created in such a short amount of time and then we just choose a name that is just created by clicking on a button and then this is one final thing. And this is what I did then. So I created a hundred names with one button click. And then I read all these names and picked the one that I thought would fit to the atmosphere that I want to create with this study. Here, for example, I picked Jemima and I have no idea what this name means or what the origins are of this name, but it reminded me of something exotic. Could be a name from the East or the West. It could be everything basically, but it has an exotic sound to me, in my opinion at least. And she could be a girl from the past or from a fantastic kingdom as well. It kind of fits the person. So this is the process how I did the studies. I really like this really fast process and adding an element of randomness to these studies fascinates me and make them even more interesting, at least for me. Maybe this is completely boring for you, I could totally understand that, <laughs> but this is at least what I experienced when I did these studies and I hope you liked it. As I mentioned in the beginning, all my studies are now available for a very affordable price in my online shop, but not only that, they are also part of my new shop update. Yay! <laughs> I have four beautiful limited edition prints for you based on my recent paintings. They are available in larger formats than usual, also with special hand embellishments. For two of my prints, I repaint selected areas of the prints with different acrylic paints to recreate the texture and the depth of the original painting. All my prints are printed on high quality fine art paper and because I scan my art 
artworks, they are true to the original and you can even see the texture of the canvas. I'm also offering free shipping until Halloween, so if you want to adopt an original or a special edition fine art print, head over to leoba.info or follow the link in the video description. Yeah, I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. See you in the next one. Bye!